What's up guys, of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours through, of course, Des Garander. And today we're going to begin Shining Sophion, are known as in the LBA, as Cincinnati Sylveons. And uh, yeah, I did a pre-analysis before this battle. Uh, it should be up on the channel as of right now. And this is basically me recording what actually happened. And uh, going into this battle, I had a lot of right Pokemon predicted with the Nino King. Rotom, Venusaur, Lodios, and Gribalion. I did not predict him on top. And uh, just look into this spell, even though I had like the right predictions to this game, it is still a tough team to go up against. Uh, I don't have speed a lot of these, I don't have speed Gribalion, I don't have speed Lodios. Those are major threats. I decided to go for a Magnet Pool um, Magneton to be or Magnetone to be able to deal with that and pretty much hoping that she's gonna start off with that. Uh, using Magnet Pool, I really hope that she doesn't have the Volt Switch and um, Basically, I'm going to use the item magnet on my uh, Magnezone to be able to maximize my damage output and hope that that is enough to take it out because I do miss out on the lattices, but at the same time, I can't risk her switching out. I need to go out of the way. Uh, besides that, I only need one speed boost to make sure my guard jump kind of works um, and it can eradicate a lot of her team, but I can only use that in late game and uh, Siglyph can take out most of her pokes uh, one on one. Probably not Nido King worst case scenario if that's scarf, but that's really the only thing that I can top, stop it if Kubalon is gone. So really now, with all this in mind, I'm just gonna go guns blazing, hope that something works, and we're gonna hit something hard, and we're gonna go from there. So let's go. So starting off here, I was obviously really, really lucky here. You know, I'm not gonna deny that fact. She's gonna start with Kubalon, like I said. I really wanna lock this thing in, and um, like I do to the mana pool. I am lucky here that she actually goes for Stealth Rocks instead. My Thunderbolt is actually not in range of taking her out. Which was, you know, I'm not gonna lie here. Uh, it's really bad, it doesn't do much damage. And the Close Comet here will almost take me out. I have actually put some effort value here to be able to take at least one Close Combat. Um, and I'm not, I mean, she gets a really nice roll there. I decided to switch up moves in case she had a Volt Switch. Uh, because if so, then uh, I probably would have faced off with the Nidoking. King. You know, doing damage to that would have been really important. But with Cabellion gone, um, I really couldn't, you know, take any chances here. I'm just gonna stay in. She does go for that power. Like I said, I was in no pr real position of predicting her. Uh, as of right now, I hope that thing is Life Orb. Uh, I'm just gonna go to my Mephos, or of course the Sigilith, to actually be able to just hurt it a lot. But she is actually gonna switch out. So that had me believe that she might be actually life orb. So psychic here we're gonna do a good chunk. I do score a crit here, but actually it doesn't really matter that much because I do pack the energy ball. Uh, but as the situation we are in, I really didn't see that Dazzling Gleam could have take uh, it out from that range. It probably could, and I should probably have predicted of course the Lodios, uh, which I don't, and damn, this thing eats it like really well. Sh sure, I could be glad that I actually don't showcase that move. But at the same time, I'm in no position of taking a Draco, like, no whatsoever. So I'm basically going to hope my power down that I know I can take at least one of those. Um, it's going to be able to, um, you know, take that hit, you know, pretty much try to soak it and then see if I can switch to something else. Sadly here, uh, she's going to show me that she's life orb. That is not something I did not really predict. And it is really close of killing me. Yeah, it's really close. Like I said, I was Specs would have killed me. But then again, if I knew she was Specs, um, I would have been able to switch out to something smarter. I am not now in that position, and even with the special attack dropped, I don't see my any of my Pokémon really, really liking the damage output this Pokémon can put out. Um, I'm basically going to force her out, and I'm going to, of course, bring the fourth back into this game. Now, Stoutland here is um, really not that important in this battle. I'm basically going to use that Pokémon to force something out and, you know, threaten things. That's the only thing I can do. Um, she'll actually decide to fire off the Rotom. It's got a heavy hit on it, and even if it is her defensive wall, uh, it can't really deal with a Stoutland anyway, at least it, when it is in a damage output or a damage state. Anyway, damn, come on and slam is gonna come, and um, it has Intimidate, you know, it's probably, you know, the defensive wall, and at this point, I was in no position of trying to hope that she's not gonna go for close combat. It seems really obvious. And of course my switches is getting like lower by the minutes. But with that close combat, that shows me at least two things. Shows me that of course that um, it is an aggressive set, definitely. 
and um, by all means is not offensive to Bills, which means that I can actually with stealth and take a close combat if that's the case. So she's gonna switch it to the Cobra. Like I said, I have Dazzle and Gleam, and that was really what I was going for. And as of right now, I really thought of a one because I was sure I was in a position where I could outspeed everything. And I mean everything on her team. But that is not gonna be the case because that's this guy, packs to ice beam, and um, it's scarfed and all. I mean, that's it. Like, there is no way of coming back from that. I was really surprised that that took me out. But at the same time, god freaking damn it. Just god damn it. Anyway, gonna go to Stoutland here, hoping for something to work, right? And I decided here that my best notion here could have been go for play rough. But even so, uh, let's say that that would have put it in a better position. She could still switch freely into her Nidoking King and her Venusaur would both be poison type and resisted the hell of that damage. So return was a better option. Sadly here, and I mean sadly, uh, that is not a 2 hit KO range whatsoever. So that really much means that I really don't want to stay, stay into that. Because I can't take an Ice Beam from the Nidoking. King. Uh, sure, I can take out the Venusaur, but I at least can take the damage from the Nidoking, King. And that's important. Um, so anyway, he she's gonna go for the Ember, which was really really cool. Uh, did not see that one coming, and I am still like full defensive, so I know I can take a Stone Edge if she packs that. And I'm just gonna go for a free Sword Stance because I need attack damage or plus damage for the Guard Chomp to actually, and I mean actually, being able to do it kill with an Outrage. But she's gonna go for Stone Edge, like I said. Uh, I know I can take one, uh, but that damage did so much. Had I been a crit. That would have been all kinds of hell right there and then. But anyway, I'm just going for break, getting another speed boost. I really didn't need it, and I actually, to be completely honest here, um, that could have been her winning condition of switching out to her Nido King, and uh, I would force go to Stoutland instead of Garchomp. But with that said, I'm finally going to go for that nasty, nasty Baton Pass into Azaxus. And Azaxus is a beast on its own. It's the Mega Guard Chomp. It's the Fiend of Fiends. And sure, the Close Combat will do a good chunk because I am, of course, still a freaking Guard Chomp. I am not yet evolved. My defenses are not on the God range. But that's about to change. That's about to change. So my opponents here will, of course, switch out to Lemmy, the Nido King here. I really think she thought she might have a chance to switch or to outspeed. And this would be her moment. This would be the chance for her to do just that. Um, but no, we're just gonna break havoc here. And of course, she needs, and I mean, she really needs to get that intimidation off. Um, like I said before here, um, I really needed the extra attack. And even with one intimidate, Outrage should still be a foot of a two-hit KO. But at the same time, she could solve me off with the synthesis. And if so, then we have another like real big issue and we're gonna try to stall that out if that's it is really possible and i was debating whether or not i should have gone for an earthquake or outrage but at this time i really just thought to myself you know what this is how we're gonna do it this this is the power of the beast that is guard chomp it got all kinds of help for not being fast enough for the meta i know you but it's just fast enough with a skull of speed behind it and this outrage will do some nice damage and i mean nice that puts her in a range where even with a synthesis, she would not have been able to recover from a 2 hit from that. But she goes for the Giga Drain, and it is not enough here for her to recover a lot, and she is gonna fall. So, Shiny Sofian, I mean, really now, I thought it was a really good game. Um, I'm trying to find like what really decided it, but it came down to, even if I just predicted right about the matchup, it all came down to whether or not they could have dealt with the Cobalion and uh, I'll say it worked for me because of that because Cobalion was such a massive overall threat to all of my Pokemon being able to naturally outspeed I did not bring the Pokemon that probably was needed to outspeed it naturally I had access to a Scarf Thunder as hell I could have access to uh, Keldeo being able to you know juggle with um, the speed time but it all came down to that you had Latias and Latias was going to outspeed everything in my team and I had to do something about that. And I'll say luckily it did work. But at the same time, it might as well not to. I mean, had you gone for close combat in the beginning and taken out my Magneton or Magnuson, you would have been able to actually keep going with that Cobalion without farting it off. And um, it looks like you didn't have access to Volt Switch, which also means that um, 
I should probably have had a Specs variant instead. Uh, Specs would have taken you out. Uh, I decided not to do that to go for a magnetize him, and that was actually kind of dangerous. <laughs> it really was. Um, like I said, while I do even for a max attack Kubalion, it still it still came down to you know that decisive point. Kubalion was really the only thing stopping me from really tearing the team apart, and Scarf Nidoking King actually took back a lot of momentum. I was really, like I said, prepared for a life or variant. I did not really consider Scarfed, and uh, that damage output, I did calc it afterwards actually, and if that was a mech special attack, um, modest variant, that would have been in a range where it had uh, actually 65% of one hit KOing me. So, it was a really high roll, sure, you know, I, I can go that route really, but um, it all came down to the very fact that uh, that actually spiced up bad the battle so much and me misplaying with my um, Scolipede and going for a second speed boost when I didn't need it was also one of those things like there were changes as well there were things that was going that could have gone wrong that luckily didn't but they might as well have done that and um, this battle could have gone either way because of that very reason sure I do some mispredictions I think my opponent actually stays in too long in some situation and it comes down to you know, you don't know your players, you kind of juggle in, you know. I think the reason it went so fast, it's only a 20 turn battle. I think it went that fast because we just wanted to break a sun what was ahead of us and hoping something that at least we get enough momentum to come on top. Like I said, the speed type was an issue for me on this side. I think the, um, the, my offensive pressure was really tough for her. And uh, the reason I win in the end is because I pretty much had a cooler head at the end. And um, it did pay off this time, but I do recognize that my opponent is a very good one. And I think she would actually have beaten me um, if she had to, um, well, construct a team of her choice. I, I truly believe that I get that feel just by that battle alone. But hell, I've been rambling for close to three and a half minutes, so sorry about that. I really, I was really impressed by my opponent. I thought it was a really nice match, and I'm glad I actually won my second match of this Lithio. I only got one loss and two wins, even though I have three losses behind me, sadly, uh, from my from the previous owner of this team, but I hope things can change. Uh, but yeah, guys, I want to thank you for watching, as always, of course, and uh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, as always, leave a like, that's a thing, and uh, if you're new to the channel, love to subscribe, and remember, sky's limit, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.